Anaplan Live. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. Function versus function. Sum versus lookup. Representing the sum function, he is the director of the Anaplan on Anaplan team. A hair above the rest, Pierre the Hair Kirkinny. And representing the lookup function, he's on the front lines of customer care as a product support analyst, Zach the Beard Fennessy. Anaplan Live. Oh, let's get ready to function! Hello, my fellow Anaplanners. My name is Pierre Kirkini, representing Team Sum today. And what I wanted to show you was just what makes the Sum functionality on the Anaplan platform so amazing. And in addition to that, what I'm going to illustrate to you today is not only how amazing the Sum function is, but just how easy it is to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a couple examples, illustrate the benefits of the sum function, and showcasing its simplicity. Now you're going to hear from my opponent and my challenger today in terms of why they're better, but let me assure you, I am truly a hair above the rest. Now for those of you that haven't used the sum function, let me give you a quick sneak peek as to what the sum function is. What the sum function allows you to do is take a flat data load or a single list data set and aggregate it up by one or more dimensions. And again, I'm going to illustrate just how easy that is to do in the Anaplan platform and what makes the sum function the most unique and versatile of all the aggregate functions on the platform itself. Thank you for that intro here, there, Pierre. And also thank you for setting the bar so low. I think that as soon as I get into my function, the superior function, the lookup function, we'll easily see which one, is the, which one is the better function, the more useful function, and the more versatile one. So let me give a brief intro into the lookup function itself. The lookup function is going to allow us to connect dynamically different pieces of your data. Um, it allows you to, uh, to search different parts from different modules. And, and dynamically change those areas within the model itself. Let's take a look at a lookup example, and I'll show you how it's done. So I have two source modules that I'm going to be pulling data from. The first then one that I want to take a look at is this employee details module. Uh, in this module, I have, a, you, I have a list that details each employee in the company, and it also Get, I have this line item, favorite candy, that details each employee's favorite candy bar. In this other module, I have the product details. Now this one is a list um, that defines each uh, candy bar, uh, breaks it down into uh, the details of each candy bar, and how specifically what I want to pull is the calories of each candy bar. Now, if I go over to my lookup example here, I want to try and figure out how many, uh, based on, I took a survey of each employee and I gathered some data of how, ma how many candy bars on average each one of these employees eats in a week time. So I'm using three pieces of information here. First thing is each employee's favorite candy bar the calories that are in each candy bar, and last but, not, last but not least, how many they're eating on a weekly basis. So I'm going to use the lookup function to get an idea of how many calories each employee is eating based on their favorite candy bar. So I have two different source modules here. The first one I want to take a look at is the employee's details. The, so this is broken down by the employee list itself, and it details their favorite candy bar. And then if I flip over to the product details, this is going to give me the, uh, the list of candy bars and a line item that specifies the calories in each candy bar. I want to so I want to calculate how many calories per week each employee is 
eating based on their favorite candy bar and the number that they're eating per week. So I'm gonna jump over to the product details module. This module is gonna give me the, the source of what I'm looking for here, which is the calories in each candy bar. So that's gonna be my source data. Simply clicking here allows me to pull in that specific line item for this module. Then I'm gonna add a bracket. I'm going to enter my lookup function followed by a colon. Then I'm gonna switch over to my employees details module. So this is where I'm going to outline each employee's favorite candy. And I'm gonna reference that here in my lookup module. Once I input that, input that into the formula, I'm gonna add a closed bracket. And then last but not least, I wanna reference back in my target module the amount of candy bars each employee is eating per week. So simply put, I'm gonna add a multiplication symbol there and then I'm going to reference that number or that line item here. And once I enter that in, it's going to give me an idea of based on the number of candy bars that each employee is eating, it gives me the exact caloric intake that they have on a weekly basis. And to kind of illustrate that the function itself, if I, if I right click and drill down into a specific employee cell here, we can see that Felix, his favorite candy is Anna Poppers, and those are about 330 calories per candy bar. Felix is consuming 55 of these in a week, and if we, and if we multiply those two together, that's gonna give us this value of 18,150 calories per week. We may have to talk to Felix about his candy consumption, um, it seems to be the uh, foundation of his entire diet, which I, I can't imagine is very All healthy. right, Zach, I think you've used up all of your time. You need to step in here a little bit and illustrate why some, again, is so much better. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think it should be called a lookup. I think it should be look, called a lookout because that certainly was not easy to use. What I'm going to show you is just how easy the sum function is. And what I'm gonna do is illustrate this by doing a very simple aggregation just to get us warmed up. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna look at a data set that I've pulled together from our favorite candy company, the Unicorn Candy Company. I've asked each of the employees at the Unicorn Candy Company what their favorite candy bar is. And what I've done is gone ahead and created through the survey a list of all of our employees by their favorite candy types. And what I've also done is added a count here which we can easily aggregate up by. And so I'm gonna move into my second module here where now I have this dimensionalized instead of by employees, by the actual candy bars themselves. And I'm gonna to try to aggregate up my survey and the count to illustrate just which candy bar is the favorite among all the employees. Now to be able to do this, what I'm gonna do is in my target module, I'm gonna to go to my formula bar I'm gonna double click on my formula bar and what this allows me to do is bring my formula bar with me as I move to the source module. Now what I wanna do is I wanna aggregate that count based on the candy bars themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the count which is what I'm trying to aggregate. The function or the syntax for the sum is a simple bracket. I'll go ahead and type out sum, add a colon, and since I want to aggregate by the candy bars themselves, I'll go ahead and click on the favorite candy line item, which is already format, formatted as that list. And to complete this functionality, I'll just close out the bracket, hit enter, and voila. What we see is an aggregate of the count to be able to quickly determine which candy bar are the employee's favorites. And what we can see is immediately, bite me seems to be a front runner which makes complete sense. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show off a little bit um, and do something that my opponent, the one, the one trick pony, can't really do. And that is work with text formatted cells. I wanna pull up the, each department's favorite function based on the country that they reside in. And as you can see here, 
as expected, everyone's favorite function is the lookup. But let's, let's, let's still play around with it here. All right. So the first thing that we talked about earlier is part of the lookup function is that I want to I want to pull in the source of the data here. In this case, it's going to be the line item favorite function. So by clicking that in here, all right, I'm going to add my first close bracket, my first close bracket, and then I'm going to reference those two separate drivers. And the first thing that I want to look up is the department, add a comma and a space, and then I'm also going to look up, based on the department, my, sep sep my second driver, which is the country here, and then make sure to add that close bracket at the end. Entering this in allows me to dynamically change based on my department and country I can flip through and these values are dynamically going to change. Um, and let me ask my opponent a quick question here. Um, Pierre, um, can you sum up based on text values? Zach, you had promised me we weren't going to drag our families into this. Well, let me, let me, let me ask, I, and I don't want to get into too much, but what about date formatted? Values. Yeah, my, my family can handle that. I got Boolean, all the other anything? aggregate functions in the family that take care of that. All I'm asking is anything other than number format. Can, can, you, can you sum up on anything other than that? My, you know, my ability has always been the numerical values. Now, if you want to aggregate up based on a Boolean, my cousins, the any and all, can take care of that. If you want to aggregate up by the text, we can use last non-blank, first non-blank. I got a family that takes care of that for me. What I focus on, Zach, is the numerical values, all right? And again, I thought you promised me before this debate started was you weren't going to muddle our families and drag them into this. Well, that's fair. But at the end of the day, my opponent's going to get the floor. But I think that my argument speaks for itself. Well, all I've heard is dynamic this, dynamic that. People want stability these days, Zach, all right? Let me show them stability and what that looks they like. They want boring. No, they don't want boring. They want experience, things that actually work, that are simple and intuitive. And that's what, exactly what I'm going to deliver on. So let me show you guys just how simple this sum function is once again. I'm going to start with just a refresher of how the sum functionality aggregates information. And what I got is, I got a new target module that I'm going to use to illustrate my point. This time I got one line item, the volume, that's dimensionalized over time. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to aggregate up a series of transactions that we have in this model. So I got a transactional module. As you can see, we have a transaction list that showcases the volume of each transaction broken down by the product, the date, the sales rep, and the location. And what I'm going to illustrate is just how easy, again, it is to aggregate all this information, Zach. It's so simple and intuitive. Now, in this particular case, if I wanted to start with one dimension, just to illustrate the point of how easy the sum function is, again, what I'm going to do is double click on my formula bar, easy, go into my transactional data set, flat, easy, click on the information I'm trying to aggregate, my volume, easy, click on that, bracket sum, colon, and in this particular case, because I'm only aggregating by my date, I'll just go ahead and click on my date line item, close out that bracket, and voila, again, we've aggregated all this information in a matter of seconds in such a simple way. Now, if I wanted to add more dimensions to this target module, it's so easy. I'll come into my blueprint. I'll apply some additional dimensions. Perhaps I want to start aggregating by my location, maybe by my product. I'll bring in my sales reps. I'll go ahead and add those dimensions in the module. I'll come out of the blueprint, and as you can see, now we have those new dimensions in this target module. One thing I have to do is update my formula to account for the new dimensions that I've brought in. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and update the formula to include the additional components that I want to sum by. So I'll come back into my transaction data and say, now that I've introduced those new dimensions in my target module, I also want to aggregate or sum by the product. I want to go ahead and sum by my sales rep. And I want to go ahead and finally sum by location. I'll close this out. And if I re-pivot this in a view that perhaps makes a little more sense to you, 
If I want to see my products broken out over time, I have the ability to do that. It's aggregated all that information in such an intuitive, simple way. What could be better than the sum function, Zach? Tell me that. I think I already have the lookup function, and I'll stick to that. Well, let's hear from our audience and hear what they have to say. Do you think it's the flip-flopper? Or the one-trick pony sum? That's the more useful function on the Anaplant platform. So drop us a kudos and let us know.